everyone, my name is Sean Arnold, and welcome to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Online Ranked Jewels. Today I'm playing against Croic9, a gentleman that's been on my channel a few times, and I've played against him uh, once or twice before. And uh, today, I am going head-to-head -head against him on Online rank Mode, we're using my Madolce deck. Starting off this turn, we're playing Reinforcement of the Army, and I can search out a card from my deck. Now, um, there's a lot of options. I could go with it for TG Striker, which is a level 2 tuner. And I can special summon itself to the field if my opponent has a monster. I have um, Spell Striker, which is a level 3 warrior monster that can um, banish a card from the graveyard. And special summon itself to the field for rank 3 plays, such as getting out Levere. Or I can go into Messenger Lato, which I really often don't want to get out of my deck unless I can guarantee that I can use it. Because its effect doesn't activate when it's normal summoned, it only activates when it's um, special summoned. So um, I like to keep him in the deck. So I'm going to now grab Spell Striker. I've grabbed that because I'm hoping maybe later on I can do something with it. And now I'm going to go and grab Anjali. Um, Spell Striker should be useful in the next turn or so for um, getting Levere the Sea Dragon out. Um, once If I can get Anjali's effect to work. And uh, yeah, unfortunately there's something else I can do to protect myself this turn. So I'm going to end and pass over to Croak 9 Let's see what he's playing, shall we? Solar Recharge, he's playing Light Swans, or maybe some kind of Light Swan variant. He discards a uh, ride into the graveyard and mills two uh, Light Swans from the top of his deck. That was a good meal for him. And uh, now he normal summons Garof, Light Swan Warrior, which um, allows you to mill more cards or draw a card, I believe. Um, no, it's to mill more cards when a um, Light Swan monster uh, sends cards from the deck. And now he attacks and destroys Madolce Magalan, who's going to get shuffled back into my deck because of her Madolce like effect. Um, is Krowak going to do anything else this turn? Um, I think he's got three light spells in his graveyard, so I need to be careful of Judgment Dragon coming out soon. Uh, but fortunately, he is his turn, and um, that's good. I'm going to be able to get my turn off this turn. Something I've got to worry about is I've got to watch out for. Um, yeah, he's got two Lumina and he's got one Raiden. I've got to watch out for Effect Failure. Effect Failure really hurts my Dolce's quite badly. Um, because Effect Failure destroys monsters not only on the field, but um, it gets monster effects not only in the field, but also when they get sent to the graveyard. So, uh, uh, Angeli wouldn't work. Now, I messed up at this point, I think. Maybe, maybe yes, maybe not. But I used Dark Hole, and um, now I'm going to special summon Spell Striker. And I want to show you guys another monster which um, Madolce's can go into quite easily. Well, not really Madolce's, but um, this works in a Madolce deck, and that is using Spell Striker, TG Striker, and Spell Striker for a Synchro 5 summon to go into the Churia Beast. The Churia Beast is a really, really good card, and what it does is while it's on the field, you can set two cards from the top of your deck to negate the effect, um, negate the activation of a spell card. This should put a lot of pressure on a Light Sworn deck, hopefully. Light Sworn decks have a lot of monsters which can get out of this, but um, they often rely heavily on their spell cards to set up their plays, and cards such as Solar Recharge, or um, what's the other card that searches out monsters from their deck? I can't remember what it's called, but it's also a really good one too. They have a lot of good um, spell cards, so um, hopefully the Churio Beast will do some work. And we'll be able to stop my opponent from making plays. That is assuming that he can't get a monster, a bigger monster on the field to um, just um, summon and then destroy the Churia Beast. So yeah, the Churia, um, Madolches really have good um, ways to get out um, but the Churia Synchros from the deck. Which can also help you make big pushes and big plays. And also stun them for a little while if need be. A card which I've seen a lot of people play into a um, Madolce deck is also Thunder King Ryo. It's not people from um, adding cards from their deck to their hand. Um, that does kind of hurt Madolce's a little bit, but um, it also negates summons. So Ryo's always been consistent. Just having a read of what Minerva does again to remind myself. Minerva is a tuner. And uh, let's see what my opponent's going to do. Is he going to attack into or crash into the Churia Beast? It looks like he is. Which means A, he wanted four, maybe he wanted four monsters in his graveyard to activate Judgment Dragon, or B, he has Honest in his hand. That's why I played Dark Hole before, because I was worried about um, running into Honest um, if I was to attack his Garov. So um, he's been able to get rid of Naturia B, so he's not going to worry about um, his spell cards um, anymore. 
And now Minerva, like Spawn Spirit, is going to mill um, two cards from the top of the deck to the graveyard. I see he's playing Necro Garner, so I'm going to have to miss the next attack of my turn. And uh, But that's okay, the field is nice and clear, so I can actually activate um, uh, my Dolce and go for that play. Just having a look at the graveyard to see what my opponent's got. He have got four Light Swan, so Judgment Dragon can come out soon um, if my opponent draws into it. So let's play Anjali and let's see what we can do for now. Uh, in this in this situation, I could do the combo and uh, well, I can't actually. I'm not going to be able to actually um, rank summon this turn because I don't have another monster to special summon. But I can go into Hoot Cake. Actually, I could do a rank summon if I choose not to necessarily go for um, Messer Gelato and maybe go to something else. Uh, but let's see. Use Hoot Cake's effect. What shall I banish? Ange uh, Angeli. It doesn't have to be Angeli actually, but it could be. So let's get rid of Angeli. And uh, let's summon something else. Now, I could do what I normally do and go into Messi Gelato and then plus from that. But um, I'm not going to be able to summon um, anything else this turn from my extra deck. And also, Tiramisu in this situation isn't necessarily too helpful. Because more of the threats are in my opponent's hand and in the graveyard, not necessarily on the field. Getting rid of um, that monster isn't going to really help too much. It looks like I am going to go for Messer Gelato. But um, upon reflection, and um, watch this again, um, maybe a rank 3 would have been better. And gone for something like, um, I have other cards such as instead of Lever, I could have gone for, say, X, X uh, the X Saber rank 3 monster that lets me get more monsters from my deck. Um, there's a lot of things I think I could have done, but um, that's okay. We've gone for Mr. Gelato, search that Madolce ticket. Gonna use it, so if I, uh, my monsters get destroyed, then um, I'll be able to get more monsters out um, from my deck to my hand. Assuming they get shuffled back into their deck first. And then let's go into the battle phase, I think. Uh, let's try and attack this monster. Let's see if he will use that Necro Garner to protect it. He might do because he might want to keep the tuner on the field. But um, I've got two monsters anyway. Yep, he's going to use Necro Gardener. So Necro is going to protect um, that monster, Minerva. And now I'm going to attack with Hoot Cake. Does he have another Honest in his hand? To be honest, getting rid of Honest, both Honest now, would be a really good thing to do. But nope, doesn't seem like it's happened yet. So he might still draw into one more if he's running two. And uh, to wrap up this turn, I'm going to set MST, and then I'm going to pass over to Croic. I watched a video uh, on YouTube recently about the January 2015 format, and they put the um, person was doing a video on the top 10 f uh, decks for the January 2015 format, and uh, Light Spawns were up there. Light Spawns were up there with Shadows, with uh, Cliff Forts. I think the best was Burning Abyss, but um, which isn't a bad choice because Burning Abyss are still relevant in this game. But um, yeah, no, uh, um, the Dolce's were nowhere to be seen on that deck for sure. For sure. Croet plays Monster Reincarnation, which forces him to discard one card from his hand, and then he can add one monster from his graveyard to his hand. Uh, he discards Necrogana, which he wants in his hand, and gets back Lumina. Lumina, I'm going to let activate her effect, which is to discard one level 4, uh, discard one card, then special summon one level 4 or lower light swarm monster from the graveyard. So now, uh, but in response to that, I'm going to play Max C. Max C, when discarded, will uh, allow me to draw a card every time my opponent special summons this turn. So, um, should he have to get something off of this. And considering the cards they have on the field, um, it's very likely that I might be able to get something else again because Raiden is a tuna monster. And I'm thinking that maybe he might go for a level 7 play. Maybe he might go into Black Rose Dragon or something along those lines. Let's have a look. It's Michael. Michael is a really, really good Michael the Arch Light Sworn. A really good uh, level 7 synchro monster, which can banish cards on the field for the, um, the cost of a thousand life points. Then when it's destroyed, my opponent can shuffle any amount of um, Light Sworn monsters in their graveyard back into the deck and gain life points for their troubles. So he banishes my Hoot Cake, which is bad for me, because uh, Hoot Cake is one of my best monsters. And uh, now he's going to attack uh, Messenger Gelato. 
who will go to the graveyard, but because he's going to get shuffled back into the deck, Ticket should activate, and I should be able to get a muscle out from my deck. I think I think you all know what I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for the best card, and it's easily Angeli. Our Angeli. Angeli is such an amazing card. Just really, really good, solid archetype support. Just um, everything you need is just a good, good searcher card. Opponent's end phase, he now has to mill three. He mills that Judgment Dragon, but he does get to um, mill a Wolf as well. And that's going to get um, special summon to the field. That should also trigger Maxi. Yeah, it did. Uh, Maxi gives me another card, which is nice. I managed to get quite a few cards at like Maxi. And uh, this opening turn shouldn't be too bad. Kind of wish I drew into Mew Fuel, which is a level 3 Madolce, which allows me to special summon one from my hand when it's normal summoned. And that would have um, been great to set up Levea plays, but um, it's okay. So let's play Anjali. If I can get out to Remasu. Ah, there's the Effect Failure. That's going to be really, really bad. Uh, effect Failure really sucks down um, Anjali. And I think at this point in time, I'm actually looking it up on the internet just to confirm whether Vela does negate Anjali when she is tributed. And yes, uh, when you tribute a monster, if it was already negated face up on the field by Vela's effect, because Vela doesn't say you must stay face up on the field, then um, she will affect it on the graveyard to the end of this turn. Her effect will still go through. It's what makes Vela so, such a strong card. And even in this day and age, Vela is still a very, very off, um, often used card. Or often side decked card. Some decks just, um, like Madolce, just fall apart when Vela is used against them. Not really a lot I can do then. That's really, really bad for me. Um... Uh, play. I, I'm gonna get rid of my opponent's monsters at least. I could do Rageki to them to do that. But uh, let's play Reinforcement of the Army. Let's thin my deck a little bit. What should we grab? We could go TG Striker, we could go Messenger Lato, or Spell Striker might be the safest bet. Might have to think about the next turn and about what I could get out on the next turn. I only run two Synchro monsters in this deck. And that being uh, the Naturia uh, monsters for negating traps and spells. If I had more, then I might have a better box to go for it through. But there are just too many rank 4 monsters which are really, really good in this um, day and age. Um, which are really more accessible as opposed to the Synchro monsters. Although I don't really st um, use many other rank 4s in this deck. Uh, sometimes I've used Exeter Knight to wipe the field. Sometimes i use used um, Dweller or um, Berserk to stop graveyard effects. Um... I also have Ragnar Zero as well, and Silent Honor Arc, but I don't really use them too much because um, Tiramisu is just a better monster than those are for getting rid of cards in the field. So Ragkeki is going to clear the field, get rid of those cards. I think uh, Michael sh might be able to activate, maybe. I don't think he's going to want to though, because um, why would he want to shuffle um, his Light Swords back in his deck at this point, because he may be able to get uh, Judgment Dragon out. He doesn't have any more cards though. Um, I think he might have one Necro Gardener in the graveyard, so I might have to watch out for that. But he's going to take this damage. Take that hit from Anjali. Now, let's just hope um, he doesn't draw into something crazy that can OTK me. Set down that Forbidden Lance. I have Forbidden Lance in this deck to protect my monsters from spells and trap card effects. But it doesn't really do a whole lot. Um, maybe there might be a better card to use than that. And Croix Surrenders. Uh, but that was fine.